What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and today we are doing a Pokemon market video. Um, a lot of stuff to talk about. The things are starting to get into a reasonable level as far as Hidden Fates prices. Charizard's finally going down. It's on that downtrend and I feel like it's going to continue to go down there. It's almost like a race to the bottom kind of thing. But very similar to last episode, I want to do a bit of a history lesson kind of thing and maybe some people aren't aware of some, other, uh, some of the older stuff. Uh, and uh, today I want to talk about the OG Shinies or they're referred to as Shinings back then. Um, and I feel like maybe this is something that everyone should be aware of and maybe consider uh, if you're considering buying like a shiny, shiny Charizard right now, but maybe you should consider some of these instead. So. <clears throat> Let's go to our first website. So in case you're not familiar with them, uh, this is way back 2001, I think. Yeah, 2001, the Neo Revelation set. Um, so yeah, super old. Uh, what is that like getting close to, um, you know, 19 years old at this point. Uh, these were the first shinies or shinings. We got Gyarados, that super cool red Gyarados and actually this golden Magikarp, which I really liked. And the interesting back then, like when they first introduced this day, I was like, oh, you know what? Not only do these look different, different color, but they also use different types of energy uh, where you have that psychic for the Magikarp and then fire and fighting for the Gyarados. So, um, you know, so keep these in mind. We're going to look at prices in a little bit, but first I want to go over all the cards. And then a year later in Neo Destiny, so 2002, uh, came the next batch. And there's actually a lot in this set, but um, yeah, and I'm not crazy about the art. I think they're kind of textured, but they're almost like, it's more like shading <laughs> rather than shiny. So I find that part kind of weird, but you know, I feel like these, these are more like pieces of history that, uh, you know, I think belong in any serious collection, you know, not necessarily focusing on the latest, the latest stuff like the shiny Char shiny Charizard. But we got Celebi. Uh, we'll be talking a lot about this bad boy, the OG shiny Charizard. Um, some other interesting one, Kabutops. This Mewtwo one's also a really cool one. Noctowl, not crazy about, but you know that does mean that as far as like an entry point, Noctowl is pretty cheap. Uh, then we had some other really cool ones, the Raichu. Steelix is another kind of like um, doesn't get too much love, and then Tyranitar to wrap it up. So let's next go look at some. PSA pricing and the point I want to make here is we're going to talk about hidden fades in a little bit but you know just let's remember some of the price points we we're talking about in the previous episodes like to buy a raw one six hundred dollars um the the BGS pristine ten ten thousand dollars or like all these uh BGS ones are selling for in the thousands and these cards that are almost like you know getting close to 20 years old uh, that probably have much limited supply um, you know it's not like you can it's gonna be super expensive to try to pull these now um, so like the amount of market share is gonna be significantly lower and just how low so these are the latest PSA 10 sales so for these guys um, 400 all of them are under a thousand that's that's amazing uh, let's see what we have next. Alright, so Shiny Magikarp, and this is what I'm talking about as far as, uh, so I kind of got a lot of these ideas behind from SM Pratt video that um, Luo DP uh, kind of suggests that I watch, and I completely agree with a lot of the points he made. So like, Shiny Magikarp first edition, there's only like 400 of them that are PSA 9 or 10, and you know, imagine what, how many Shiny Charizards there will be and let's fast forward six months from now. You know, I bet there will be 500 of PSA 10, PSA 9, uh, actually probably more, <laughs> you know? And so we kind of look at these ones where, yeah, good luck finding packs to open. In fact, maybe the packs are worth more or like the booster box or whatever. Uh, th these numbers probably aren't gonna grow very much higher. So like the, the amount of pop that you can even obtain is very limited. And yet the prices, this one's super interesting. In fact, like, you know, I'm considering like, oh man, is this something that I should uh, look to pick up? I don't have a PSA 10 first edition. And it looks like they're downtrending down to like 500, which is very, you know, I feel, find it very interesting whenever something goes down, it's super rare. And then if you do uh, like want to step down a notch, like under 200 for a PSA 9 card. First, the OG Shining, um, from almost 20 years ago with a very limited pop like 
you know, that sounds like an opportunity to me. And, you know, my point here is like, are we focusing on the wrong things? Let's go to the next one. We got Gyarados. I, I love this art. It was so cool when this thing first came out. You know, under 100 PSA 10s and under 300 PSA 9s. Uh, this one, yeah, not not that surprising. Is pretty expensive, like oh, on some point recently, like you know, un, under 700. Uh, but to be honest, most of the time I'm fine with the PSA 9 uh, when it comes to this really old stuff. So like under 200, that that sounds great to me. Let's go to the next one. Uh, so yeah, so there's a lot to consume here, but not surprising. Like the Charizard one is very popular. So the last couple sales were in the 2000s for both of them. But let's take a look at Charizard First Edition. Once again, you know, look at how many PSA 10s and 9s there are. Um, sometimes I will go to an 8, but I rarely go lower. But maybe Charizard First Edition is like the one. Uh, even, yeah, these 9s are super expensive. We're looking at the thousands. I feel like, oh, 6. 6 is kind of hard to, hard for me to stomach. But hey, you know, that uh, maybe that's... We have the next one so but the regular shining charizard you know a little bit higher pop just because it's kind of like the unlimited set but uh so i already narrowed it down to eight to nines and it's very interesting that these prices are almost like intersecting so you know a psa 9 for like under 400 um so let's compare this again to like the charizard like oh should i buy a raw charizard that's not even graded yet and i don't know if it's a 10 and 9 and uh you know no matter what it is good luck getting your money back or should you know try to look at picking up a card from 2002 that has a very limited pop and i can get a psa 9 unlimited for under 400 dollars that's you know now to me i'm very interested so i want to note that we're not covering the gold stars which are kind of like shinies too uh that one we'll cover in different because i do want to hold off a little bit because i have something special planned for that episode and lastly, we'll go to some eBay. These are sold for the shiny Charizard, shiny Charizard, and even the raw. So like, you know, binder collections and stuff like that. Uh, I feel like a lot of times they get overlooked, but you know, but even buying it raw is, real, in my opinion, somewhat reasonable um, for cards that are this old and, you know, you can't go buy more packs for it compared to like Hidden Fates. Yeah, it's hard to find now, uh, but I think over time, it'll become more and more easier to obtain as far as just getting the packs to potentially crack open these cards. Uh, like if you have Neo Destiny packs, like, man, keep them sealed. <laughs> the chance of pulling that Charizard is super low and it's probably worth more, or it's probably safer to keep it sealed. But um, yeah, we do have that PSA 9 for 500 and a lot of raw ones for un like a little over 100 and good condition too. Uh, doesn't look like yeah the first edition is pretty scarce here's one a raw first edition for 400 pretty expensive um, but then for most of them to be honest you can even go to a TCG player um, so claim near mint uh, but for like a Gyarados one of them's like less than 70 uh, and then like you're looking at like a hundred Magikarp around a hundred as well I think this one's a little bit uh, yeah these are still kind of expensive um, but I do like the idea of having raw, especially if you know you you know you don't want to put it the premium for like the PSA nine or ten. I feel like binder collection is a perfectly way to go. You can even go down to light play for those for those instances, in my opinion. So yeah, OG shinies. Uh, you know, while all this hype is going on for hidden fates, keep an eye out for these guys. Maybe it's something you want to add to your collection. In my opinion, these are part of history that everyone should have, at least some of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty affordable. Kabutops, it's kind of like a one-off one. Uh, you know, easily under $100 you can get a potentially near mint one. All right, but now let's move on to Hidden Fates. See how things are shaking out there. I appear to have lost one of my tabs. So many tabs. But all right, here we go. But yeah, things are starting to stabilize and I'm hoping that they're gonna continue to go down. So if you've been holding off on like no way you know this six hundred dollars that's absurd like all right now they're starting to move when it'll bottom out i have no idea in my opinion this will continue to go down it took longer than i was expecting uh, even for the charizard but yeah cheapest ones under 500 at this point on, on tcg player and here we go to ebay let's see we got some yeah so even these bgs like nines again like when we're talking about those other ones 
um, feel like you could get multiple PSA 9 um, some of them first edition uh, but almost all of them unlimited like of the OG Shinings from 20 years ago uh, versus getting one <laughs> shiny Charizard which you can still pull today um, but yeah so the even like the so this isn't the black label one but the the 10s from BGS are you know already getting close to that thousand dollar mark the raw ones I think you can start finding them for five four hundred let's take a look at the sold so best offer accepted for 425 you know I'm kind of glad uh, that I did hold off on some of them there's still some in the 500 but you know these 400s are now becoming common at this point and I can only expect they'll continue to go down you know once ETBs hit um, there's going to be a lot more pack, another wave of surge of pack openings again and eh, maybe to some degree also with the pokeball tins and then the premium collections and there's just going to be more and more charges like um, the pop report i feel like it's just going to be like steady steady climb till it gets to like thousands versus like for those uh neo cards like psa 9 and 10 populations like under 300 whatever 400 Moving on to Cynthia, so we're going to look at the like the most expensive supporter gold card in the uh, stadium. Cynthia's you can buy them now at some of them like wow this is oh that's a online card so yeah like sixty I feel like that's but it's kind of like hovering holding around that mark. Let's take a look at sold listings yeah around sixty seventy. Um, so this one hasn't moved that much. I'm kind of surprised by that. Although I would expect this to continue to trickle down. Although it is still uh, standard legal. Shrine of Punishment. Ah, this one we do have. And it looks like you can pick some up at the 30s, which to me is, uh, you know, at, if that's something you want to pick up, like uh, this one, I kind of wonder if this is going to start settling around here. 30s. Uh, for a card that, in my opinion, is still really useful um, for, a, for this rarity. I feel like 20 would be like a steal, so I kind of doubt it'll get that low. For sold listings, but yeah, we're hovering around the $30 mark, which I think is great. Wow, 29. That's a good deal in my opinion. Whoa, 20. What? Oh, I wish I picked that one up. And then Tapu Lele. Uh, when I first saw this, like this $100, $100 for all three, you know, like three weeks ago, that would have been unheard of. I think Lele herself was just at a hundred and now it's Lele is down to like that $40 mark to be honest I almost bought this on impulse but then I thought about it like all right if Lele is the most expensive one and that one you can pick up right now for 40 then the other ones are probably a little bit cheaper we'll go to sold list things um ooh, a full set for 100 that's oh I like that but yeah you can pick up Lele individually for or has been picked up for like it's basically broke that $40 mark and we'll probably go down a little bit I kind of doubt it'll get to like uh, much lower than 30 and um, yeah so all the things are starting to stabilize uh, even for people that are just itching to buy their Charizard like guys it's going down I bet it's gonna continue to go down for for a long time I bet it's like a slow slow uh, de decline steady decline for I don't know quite a period of time if we look at uh, I don't have it up right now but even unbroken bonds we use that example so for example like burning shadows I feel like has stabilized if you want to pick one up off of this site I think it they're basically 250 uh, but unbroken bonds you know the rushes are I think it's still continued to, Wow you know a couple months ago we were looking at like 200 and now you can pick these up for 140 so this one's continued to decline and that's what I mean, you know, it'll take, it takes a long time for it to kind of settle down. In my opinion, Burning Shadows Charizard has. Uh, it's kind of hovering around that 250. And so we'll see where the shiny Charizard is. But, you know, it wouldn't shock me if Hidden Fates becomes something that people are cracking uh, for a long time. You know, I, I have a suspicion that Cosmic Eclipse is not going to get the attention it maybe deserves just because... You know, Hidden Fates is still going to be what everyone's focused on. Um, so we'll kind of see how that pans out. But uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are, especially on the OG Shinies or Shinings. And um, yeah, if you have other topics that you will want to see covered on this series, let me know in the comments. Um, if you do enjoy the if you enjoy the series and you don't have any comments, 
please hit that like button just so I know that you know you want to see more and we'll kind of I use that to help gauge interest in these different topics so that's it for today let me know what your thoughts are thanks for watching guys I'm Moana Turtle and I'll catch you guys next time